Hello friends, welcome back to yet another module of online refresher course in philosophy. I am Dr. Yogesh Chandar, Assistant Professor in Institute of Teacher Training and Research, Bhagat Phool Singh Mahila Vishwadhyalaya, Khanpur Kala, Haryana. In this module, I am going to discuss about concept and philosophy of feminism with participation of Indian women athletes at Olympics. Learner is expected to acquire basic concept of women in sports such as Learner identifies sports with feminist perspective. Learner is also going to understand the philosophy of physical expression in modern Olympic Games. Learner will also understand the journey of Indian and Western women participation at Olympic Games. When I talk about this world where we all human beings live in, we all are entitled to equal rights and access to all opportunities. In today's world, we all need the environment where we can lead to fair, unbiased, equal life and can prosper and grow in this world together. In this module, I am going to discuss about the philosophy of feminism and role of Indian women athletes in Olympics. Before I go further, let's try to understand the concept of feminism. Feminism talks about gender equality. Feminism is giving back to women what they deserve what they were denied since centuries. Across culture, feminism is misunderstood term as there are number of myths associated with this term. Annoyed women shouting loud slogans is sometimes considered feminism. On other occasion, it is the loss of control on privileges and opportunities by men which they relish. Feminism is also associated to threat, threat to religion, threat to tradition and threat to patriarchy. Feminism is not against the institution of marriage. It is not anti-men. It is not against other culture or value system. Further, we can say that feminism propagates the rights of women for equality of sexes in all domain of life. That is, in all political, economical, personal and social domains, feminism is all about examining the gender inequality existing in society. Feminism is where men and women are treated equally in all spheres of life. It advocates equal opportunities to both gender at home and outside home. It also propagates the idea that there should not be any gender stratification in social, cultural and economic areas. Feminism is not sameness. It is not switching off roles either. Feminism is an interdisciplinary approach and a symbol of equality. It is based on belief that men and women deserve equality in all opportunities, treatments, respect and social rights. In next part of module, let's discuss the philosophy of feminism. The philosophy of feminism assert that a woman has always contributed in all spheres of society and social structure. But when her rights were denied, she became submissive and second string. The history of feminism movement passed through four waves. The first feminist wave goes back to World War I, suffrage movement in the beginning of 20th century. During this wave, they were granted right to vote, freedom and social right. In this period, all over the world, various organizations started to speak about women's rights and their political and economic equality. This first wave of feminism was able to inspire and influence all other moments of feminism. This name of giving women a new image place started to spread all over the world. Second wave of feminism is referred mostly to radical feminism. It is also referred as Women Liberation Movement of late 1960s and early 70s. This wave of feminism emphasized equal legal and social rights. Now let's discuss about the third wave of feminism. This wave has started in early 90s. Rebecca Walker is the symbol of third wave of feminism. This phase of feminism considered women as moment of liberation. Feminists of this wave considered themselves as most powerful, the most effective group of feminists, as they have built and changed the ways and methods of looking for women's rights. 
the feminist of this way propagates the idea of not classifying and putting women into categories and hence successful in removing stereotypical images. Feminists were not only demanding the political and social right for women, rather they were demanding right for them in all domains of life. Fourth wave of feminism begins in 21st century which demand greater representation of women in politics and businesses. This new image of feminism advocates their ideas, theories at various platforms and through various mediums like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and WhatsApp. This is a revolutionary change in different domains of women rights, their voice is heard, discussed and we are moving toward gender equality and social justice in society. In the next part of module, let's discuss about gender inequalities in India. Women in India face gender inequalities in all spheres of life. As per UNDP report, India is at 132nd position out of 187 countries on gender inequality index. According to Amritya Sen, his essay, Many Faces of Gender Inequality, he explained that there are seven types of inequalities broadly can be mentioned as mortality inequality, natality inequality, basic facility inequality, special opportunity inequality, professional inequality, ownership inequality and household inequality. As we all know, India is the largest democracy in the world and we have attained a substantial growth rate at economic front. We are going to be the youngest country in this demographic dividend phase. Therefore, this demographic dividend must be coupled with high female participation in all domains as it will lead to higher growth. Now, in next part of module, let's try to understand the historical mapping of feminism in India. It begins with the moment of eradication of Sati system by Raja Ram Mohan Roy during British colonial rule in India. There were many prominent leaders like B. R. Ambedkar, Jyotiba Phule, Mahatma Gandhi, Sarla Devi, Chaudharani, Kamini Roy, Prem Chaudhary, Vandana Shiva, Rajeshwari Sundar Rajan, Umanarayan, etc. If I elaborate it further, Mahatma Gandhi made women an integral part of Indian national movement, thus urging them to come out of their domestic sphere. Another example is of Ishwar Chand Vidya Sagar, who introduced widow remarriages. Another prominent example is of Savitri Bhai Phule, who was a Marathi feminist who started school for girls, and Tarabai Shinde, who wrote India's first feminist text, Stri Prosh in year 1882. Professor Kapil Kapoor, currently working as chairman, Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla, is of firm belief that philosophy of feminism has its deep root in ancient India. In one of his work, he states, We are not told of eight learned women named and honored in Vedas. Sashi, Gargi, Mamta, Viswara, Apala, Gosha, Surya and Vak. We are not told that Saraswati is the goddess of all Vedic learning. We are not told that some of the most beautiful images are female, such as Hans Vahini Saraswati and Makar Vahini Ganga. India's women movement has a long history. It has started much before the third and second and the first wave of feminism. The feminism in India goes back to Shakti cult. The concept of Shakti, the female power, a principle recognized thousand years ago. The concept of Ardhanarishwar, which means a blend of men and women representing a constructive power, where Shiva stands for feminine self, is also ancient. Similarly, the Kali cult represents feminine power, the holder of active power placing traditional concept of femininity at center. Further, the references for Vedas also propagate this belief that women movement has started long time back. Like Maitri and Gargi, the women with sublime intellectual acumen. 
Altaker claimed women as one of the best gorges of civilization during Vedic age. The entire network formed the representation of India and Indian women emerging in writings. Women on one hand were involved into literary creation while on other hand they were warriors and administrators like Lakshmi Bai, Mai Bhago, the first women in battlefield of Punjab, Rani of Kittur, Rani Chiramma, and Rudrama Devi. Mirabai, despite having restrictive atmosphere, became a saint, composing hymns on Lord Krishna. Thus, Indian women reflected their own philosophies and form of resistance. The idea of Indian feminism is more explicit in rural areas. Women enjoy a more extrovert life involving strenuous physical activities which stand in high contrast to their westernized counterpart. This aspect of Indian feminism has gone a long way in producing outstanding women sportsperson predominantly from countryside. Popular cinema in India, that is Bollywood, has highlighted this aspect through movies like Dangal, which is related with wrestling, Chuck de India with hockey, Mary Com covers boxing, Purna is related with mountaineering, and Sant Kiang covers shooting, etc. An extensive research on this aspect of feminism can boost participation and performance of women in big international sporting events like Olympic Games. In the next part of module, I am going to discuss about the representation of women in Indian sports and Olympics and also discuss the spirit along with principle of Olympism. As we all are aware of fact that to spirit of sports encourage excellence, it preserves dignity, it indicates respect and it also extends harmony along with amity among the participant. A sport is a blend of abilities including psychomotor, affection and cognition. When I talk about Olympism, it referred to philosophy of Olympic Games. Olympism built a better world through sports and it also give direction to human beings. Olympism principles are outlined in Olympic Charter, which is in fact is a way of life. Here, sports are blended with different flavors of culture, education and international cooperation. Olympic Charter states that Olympism is a philosophy of life exalting and combining in balance whole the qualities of body, will and mind. Blended sports with culture and education, Olympism seeks to create a way of life based on the joy found in effort and educational value of good example and respect to universal fundamental ethical principles. As we all know that gender equality is a major issue which is faced by every single woman in all domains of life. Sports industry is the area where women suffer the most with the problem. Gender equality in sports is about access of right opportunity in the field of sports. It allows barrier free sports participation for both male and female. So we can say that gender equality is in sports is all about creating equal opportunity and providing equal access to all kind of resources. Here I just want to quote Simone Biles who says that it is not about women mirroring the success of male athletes. It is about allowing women in sports. Here I just want to quote Simone Biles who says it's not about women mirroring the success of male athletes. It's about allowing women in sports to compete on the same stage. The statistics indicate clearly that women has low participation in overall world of sports. There can be number of reasons for this low participation in sports like poor financial position, household responsibility, security concerns, transport access, insufficient sports facilities and many other social and cultural constraints. 
a disparity in wages among men and women athletes is again a major issue in many of the professional sports like cricket as given in the table the table clearly indicate the glaring disparity between salaries of men and women cricketers in india participation in sports benefit women in numerous ways like it, it makes women self confident it makes them more skilled at decision making and develop leadership qualities and skills it improves their socialization as they go places they interact with diverse people and hence give them more exposure to outer world it improves their health positively as they get chance to liberate their energy in right and positive direction it changes gender stereotypes it empowers women by offering equal opportunities to them it help in holistic development of personality as it changes gender norms and provide gender mobility nowadays it has been proved that sports participation and physical activities facilitate better health prevent from illness and strengthen immune system it reduces the risk of heart diseases high blood pressure diabetes endometrial and even cancers of colon and breast it help in positive health esteem and regular healthier menstruation body weight control delayed aging and osteoporosis especially after near menopause beside having positive influence on health it is associated with better academic performance and lower dropout rates and wholesome personality development the overall benefit of olympism in sports can inculcate qualities like team spirit leadership and mutual understanding there are number of researches which have proved the positive result of women participation in sports pt usha duti chand hima das pv sandhu Mansi Joshi, Shakshi Malik, Deepa Malik, Anjali Bhagwat, Anju Bobby George, K M Binamol, Sunita Rani, Shaini Ibrahim, Sarju Bala Devi, Madhumita Best, Saina Nehwal, Deepa Karmakar, Mary Com, and Sania Mirza, etc., are some of the proud women names who have contributed in Indian sports. They are inspiration for young females. In the next part of module we are going to discuss about participation of women in sports and olympic games in ancient times a woman was not even allowed to witness sports event but as the time passed with the struggle of feminist made her able to participate in political social and economical position with advent of different waves of feminism the participation of women in sport started increasing with coming years let's talk about women participation in sports especially at modern olympic games in modern olympic games in year 1896 athens there was no women participant but with the effort of international olympic committee it was for the first time 22 women were entered into second olympic games held in paris anita l d friends was the first woman to be elected at international olympic committee's vice president in year 1997 in year 2000 ioc initiated women in sports award to encourage participation in sports and another initiative started by international olympic committee is setting of women and sports commission for policy planning and gender equality in year 2004 it is evident from figure a which contains detailed comparative bar graph percentage of world and indian women olympians since 1896 from athens to 2016 at rio de janeiro olympic games indian women athletes have debuted in year 1924 at paris olympic with single women athlete entry therefore overall women olympians got significant achievement in participation percentage 
बट इंडियन वुमेन एंट्री वर मिसिंग अप टू हेल्सिंग की ओलंपिक इन ईयर 1952 सिंस इंडियंस वर एक्सपीरियंसिंग एंड पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल दैट इज व्हाई देयर वाज नो रिप्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम इंडियन साइड इन ओलंपिक्स इवन इन ईयर 1992 there were only 7.84% of indian women olympians liberalization privatization and globalization in india during the late 20th century and simultaneous commencement of third wave of feminism in world resulted into significant increase participation of indian women athletes in olympic games here on world indian took leaps in participation percentage in rio olympic in year 2016 world and indian women olympians percentage were nearer to 45% it is predicted for tokyo 2020 that there would be more than 48% overall women participation the agenda of united nation for 2030 also consider sports as a key to sustainable development international olympic committee agenda 2030 mainly emphasize on gender equality with on and off the field ioc has decided that all new sports to be included in the games must contain women events all over the world in national olympic committee there have been 13 presidents and 33 secretary general up to year 2018 in the end let's sum up the whole idea of this module sports and games are one of the most popular acts of men guide in the world that involve people from all ages and gender combined effort from all stakeholders can advocate for women rights and opportunities inclusion and sensitization of both sexes can bring gender equality education is quite instrumental in sensitizing toward gender equality creating conducive and productive environment may increase women participation in sports in this 21st century women need to participate in decision making women must be given opportunities in administrative bodies and organization efforts are also required to achieve gender equality in recreational sports today is a era of professional leagues therefore professional leagues for women should be promoted in various games university or school curriculum must promote women's leadership opportunities in sports access to sports after school and college should be made available to young people irrespective of gender printing and non printing media can play a crucial role in spreading awareness and hence motivates and increases participation in sports more coverage and exposure of women athlete to encourage other towards sports policies should be framed and implemented for the promotion of their participation in sports i hope you like the module i wish all the best for your future thank you